Hi guys, it's Tim here from cleverbodybuilding.com and today we've got a special podcast with some uh, very uh, interesting people and uh, a lot of my childhood uh, sort of superstars. Um, we've got Barry Volwell, who we've met before. Uh, okay, say hi bye. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Paul Longfield. Hi, you going? <laughs> and Paul's come all the way over from the Philippines uh, to come and say uh, hi and have a chat with you guys today. And we've seen John Bridge before. Hello, okay. folks. <laughs> Hello, folks. And then we've got uh, Mike Sully, uh, Nava Northwest president. And uh, Mike's got quite a few stories to share with these guys as well. So we're going to have an interesting talk. Okay, so um, you guys were uh, competing all together, weren't you? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, you got a lot, lot of battles. Arch enemies. Arch enemies. Let me interrupt that because uh, obviously I've been in the sport since I was eight, so the dad from the back from Australia. And, um, I've like grown up with these guys um, and become you know, very close personal friends from one way or another. Between them, they've got more um, prison years than titles. No, sorry. <laughs> they've got... Um... <laughs> 100 years of sentence. <laughs> no, but between them, it was... I, I, I remember it well. Um, I, I don't think I was long Northwest president, really. Um, it was like a golden era of class two um, with, there was John, Barry, there was Paul, then you had Dave Fox, then you had... Um, Lucas, Slow Nichols, Luke Jeff Nichols, Hargreaves. Jeff Hargreaves, uh, David Bell, but when, it, when it went on to... McDonnelly. McDonnelly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're talking guys who any normal year would have won the Britain anyway, but these all guys were against each other. Um, the beauty of it was that even though there were enemies on stage, they weren't enemies on stage, they were, right. they were warriors and rivals, but they were best mates. And that friendship has carried on. How long ago was that? 20, huh? 20 years? 20, 20, 20, 20 years. years, you know. I met you in 2001, 2003. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, there's, there's so many stories that, that they could tell between them. We thought we'd have a special podcast because Paul's come back over from the Philippines after being... Uh, long holiday. Long holiday. Yeah, yeah, long exactly. holiday, yeah. yes. Went to, uh, went to Butlins and ended up in Philippines. That's right. Yeah. And went to be Margate for two weeks. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what a shit map. We'll have to kick yeah. off the stories, though, with probably one of the most famous stories. I, I always tell it. Um, and people still talk about it to this day. In fact, it was a year, two years before we got through out the Prince of Wales because of, of um, a certain person's attitude in there, I could also you. <laughs> and uh, we had to beg to get it back. So I'd done everything I could, you know, I was, I was, they've, they've been fantastic with me since. So I come into the Prince of Wales, everyone was staying there, and Paul's bouncing around like, I don't know, just, just bouncing around, come and have a look. Anyway, he spent four hours because the best lighting was in the elevator, which was about this big. Mirrors are very good. Indeed. Very, very good, very good lighting. <laughs> with his pants down, <laughs> he had his pants down, all of his thing. So look at my legs, and then it was stopping at every floor, and all of these old-age pensions were going. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's still talked about in the Prince of Wales. Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. 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 So tell us that story, Paul. Yeah. What, what, what well, that's a bit famous for someone, isn't it? <laughs> no, what it was, it was, you know, on the night before the competition, you're obsessed with what you're looking like. You? Yeah. And the, the lighting it wasn't bad in the your hotel toilets, but the best lighting was actually in the lift, wasn't it? Adam? Yeah, which could fit about two people. Well, I used to go in the middle of the night, and I was checking my condition on my glutes and my hamstring tires and lower back and everything. <laughs> and I worked between that. the floors and, you know, oh yeah, we bang right, and then I go back to bed and go, oh, what a rubbly light now. Obviously, taking the retics thing, the water's yeah. coming up. Oh, I'm improving, I'm going up down on the lift slide. Yeah. And then I think four Nabba judges got up and then I'm this sick naked person. Yeah. <laughs> well, what Paul, do, what Paul doesn't know um, yeah. is, and that, that, that's not even half the story, because you're saying you're doing that during the night, you were doing that from seven o'clock. No. Yes, you were. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. <laughs> the Prince of Wales 
had that many people scared because there was this naked man in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> this is the truth that they ended up getting using the staff elevator to escort the old age pensioners up to the second and third floor. So it's from seven o'clock right, that well. people were scared to go in the elevator <laughs> and they had to use the staff elevator. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the truth. Yeah. Very wonderful, didn't he? Yeah. It did, but it's easy. Well, that worked. Yeah. 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 So, um, what about what about you, John? I mean, I mean, you ended up winning. I think it was, was it the year after Phil. Yeah. Uh, Paul, sorry. Yeah. Um, but there was like a couple of years where that like, you and Barry were fighting out with Mike Donnelly. And, yeah, you know, three, four, great five, North-west. six, seven. Yeah. Um, all from them, the northwest. All the years coming in were. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you knew what you're up against. And I think you're up your game, Tim, you know what I mean? Yeah, it will, yeah. Um, Paul popped round to my house three or four days before Britain, 2006, near Paul won it. And his mate come with us, his then mates, and uh, he drove Paul, like, and I written a little tennis in Preston in afternoon. He got out of the car looking like a skeleton. I had the open door looking like Skeletor and his mate went, Jesus Christ, he said, look at that, you know what I mean, we're both dying to try and beat each other, you know what I mean, and it were, it were like, in it right Barry, it is when me. you knew someone was in it, you thought, I'm going to have to go the extra mile, yeah. you know, because he's in it, and you always knew he was going to be in that final, and it was the biggest show in country national yeah, final, yeah, back, yeah, you know, we've had a bit of a decline in that, I prefer to say, but back then, that was the creme peak. of the creme. It was the peak as and well. you, you had ten good lads in, in, yeah. in your class who all had a, who, you know, were all winning shows. You had 20 in a lineup, you know, and you knew when these guys were in, you know, you knew this guy was going to be the biggest, widest on stage, sharp as hell. You knew he was going to be like that package, you know, everything's there and crisp as fuck, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So you trained all that. I used to have a three months out coming in. I used to have six names for me six reps. And when my training partner, Andy Kenyon, <laughs> would be coming through, I'd say, right, one for Longfield, one for Vormar, one for fucking Smith, one for Fox, you know. And I'd, I'd just keep eking these extra reps out. Like, Seriously, these Shout guys. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would insane sets and, uh, you know, and I'm walking in the morning, right? Fucking bastards. You know what I mean? And, uh, and that was because the class was that. You didn't have any weakness. You were never up against any easy rides, you know what yeah, I mean? There were guys that, could be yeah. ten. If we go back to 2006, yeah. there were guys that didn't make the top six. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. That had been in the place in the top three in the universe in yeah. the world yeah. the year before. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. that particular year, in your year, that yeah. especially when Brad yeah. Flockhart and Flocky and yeah. come back. Yeah. 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 Well, you had to look social media. Then. Ah, so yeah. You had to go to a quality. You did on the great band, John's looking good, yeah. Paul's looking good. So you think, I think you're going to get spots somewhere. Sneak in, you're going to get a little sneaky look after the reality. You're going to get it on. It's funny enough, I was offered a guest spot at the North East that year, and I declined it because I didn't want anybody I to see me. That. And John was doing a guest spot at the North West today, and he did, he did do it. So I sneaked up to watch, I sneaked up to yeah. watch something. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 I won't yeah. be to meet biceps. I might as well back this in. Well, yeah. this, is, this is a question I've got to oh, ask. I kept him covered all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three, <laughs> three days or three weeks before the Brit- or three days before the Britain, he comes and visit you, and you are oh, tribal. Yeah, he used to come to me gym all the time. And this day, as I say, well, that ill, I weren't <laughs> at gym that day. You know, I couldn't stand. Oh, well, that just shows the friendship. He, well, that's what I mean. Yeah. You know, and he popped round, and he ran after, and he saved me Barry like I mean, yeah. I, I bet I met all Liverpool lads first time I did a show two thousand and one. You know, and uh, Barry Live was doing yeah. the, the, ah, the, yeah, the UK, yeah. the Wabba like, okay. and uh, I seen Barry backstage, great guy, real humble, modest guy like, and I thought, Jesus Christ, you know. And I weren't meant to do that show, I, I phoned my coach, Chris, I said, I'm shitting myself at North West. I said, I, I, I was shy me, you know what I mean? I thought I can't stand up even at a wedding, you know, let alone on a yeah. stage, you know. So, uh, and then you come to pose to do you look like a lady? Yeah, yeah. well, that's, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm a bit nuts, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ended up just jumping in this show in Rotten Store, like, you know, and didn't tell anyone. And a week before at Northwest, and that's when I met all this lot, you know what I mean? They were there to support Barry, like, who became another good mate of mine. And we were up against each other for a few weeks, 
you know, but great pals like. I think the Liverpool lads respect me because I were, I'm not being funny like, but when I went to UK, there was the typical a black guy who thought he like Mr. T. Yeah. The supermodel girlfriend, he had his own room and he were walking around and he was a big guy like, but he was smooth as a pig. He had gold <laughs> on and he were like, and everyone's like, Jesus. And he had that attitude and that swag in oh, him. Oh yeah. We're just there like, telling up, thinking we look shit and Barry's there. And I remember my legs were that cut like, he, come over, you know, that typical scow sex and, and he was like, fucking hell, lad, look at your fucking pigs. <laughs> you have pigs in the corner. Fucking pigs. You understand any of it? Not really, but no. Chris Stead was Scottish and I didn't have a fucking clue what Chris ever said, you know what I mean? Yeah. What are you, he, he, he. I was like, hey, all right, I'll do that. But I'm not going to say, eh, he can't keep saying that to me, 20 odd story, kill me, you know. Yeah, yeah. what do you mean, eh? Because you two have been. Right, really good friends and rivals, famously really, hasn't it? Yeah. Since Paul's yeah. departure, like, yeah. you sort of, yeah. it was like a big Well, Paul always had the mad idea about having this coming on stage, a bit like WWF. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, and having, you know, because remember that poster they needed this man? Yeah, do I remember yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> Walked across like Freddy Krueger and uh, Clint Eastwood. Right. He had the uh, Wild West, Wild North West poster, he was famous then. Because he had a he had a car bite on, didn't you? But the way he was looking, he looked a bit like uh, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> uh, scary, really scary. And Paul wanted to have this, didn't you? Where we were going to have this WWF rivalry, like yeah. and come on stage and you'd yeah, and you can kiss my ass and you can go fuck yourself, man, and have all that. But in fun, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, we'll uh, talk about in fun because obviously I was promoting the open to promote the Britain. And Paul comes to me and goes, I want to come on stage and was it Raz Ravishing Rick? Ravishing Rick. Rick Rude. 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 In the WWF at the time, you'd come on and go, ladies, <laughs> look at me. I know I'm better than you all. You know, you do the, you do the thing. Well, there used to be Ravishing Speech was uh, get a girl and go, ah, you're the luckiest lady on God's good earth. That's it's half the chance to spend the night with this fan specimen in the <laughs> But Obviously, they're a little shy. You're overawed by my ravishing body. <laughs> but what are you going to do is ignore these great big petrol miles, take a deep breath, and lay it on me, baby. Paul comes to me saying, I was going to do it. Paul comes to me saying, I'm going to do this. So I'm going, no, no. I was just like, oh. What I was going to do, do you remember the year of Under Britain 2006? Yeah. You, North West, we discussed about doing a, me doing a guest spot. Yeah, yeah. And I was with Lisa Mann at the time, you remember? Yeah. Her and Adele, I was going to wear the cloak with the little pink yeah, lips on I the back. They were going to carry the yeah. cloak at the back, and I am going to unveil me to the adorning master. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to pick up Brian, the chairman. Yeah. I go, Hazel, baby, stop alluring me with those big, big bedroom masks. <laughs> Ain't Brian ringing the bell anymore. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and then Brian's giving me that funny brow look now. I don't look like I'm in a place at the chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Kenny Case, yeah. looks like I'm with you all now. What's your call, Brian? Yeah. Uh, I remember it well. I just, I could just imagine myself stood in front of the council getting disciplined again. <laughs> yeah. I've had enough for that. <laughs> but yeah. the, I remember the, uh, a few years later, uh, well, I thought Barry had won it the year as oh, Andy Jay was and David Bell. Yeah, he was shredded. Oh, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, that was the one where that 2009, wasn't it? 2008. Eight. Yeah, yeah, year after that one, yeah. 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 It just seemed to be like the right progression. Best there's ever been, that, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that, to, is that to wait a long time to get his Mr. Britain title? Mm. Yeah, and he was, we said to Paul before, because we, we've not met up for a long time. As I say, he's been on a long holiday, like, but I was telling him how bad uh, Barry's injury when he had, you know, all this yeah, side and yeah. abscess and sorts, yeah. everything yeah. cut away, like, and then he came back after probably thinking he would finish and then got that big Britain win uh, long overdue, like, last year, eh? Yeah. What was that like, mate? Best feeling in the world. It's been 20 plus years and I thought I was never going to get one. I thought it was just everyone else was getting the Britain by me. Yeah. Uh, and I, was, I, I think for us guys, it, the Britain's the holy grail. Yeah. It's the golden goose. There's yeah. universes. I think universes like and worlds. But yeah. I've won a few international level at Masters level. Yeah. But nothing will replace winning the Britain. I wouldn't swap the, 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 the Britain is against all the Olympia. people you know, so the people you've competed I against for years. Like yeah. 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 The lessons yeah. you've said the Premiership, all the lads from, from Preston, yeah. from Nottingham, from yeah. and 
you try to climb, you try to climb, yeah. and get there. And when you eventually get there, you know. Like, but but I've, got to, I've, yeah. I've got to interrupt there because you're not telling the full story again, eh? <laughs> so he does the Northwest two weeks before. No, I was spotting dummy old school. I've got to know Barry since I was, well, I've loved to see him forever. Uh, uh, and he got beat. I think I'll be fair and square. Fair and square? Yeah. Yeah, fair and square. But I'm handing out the invites as they're coming off and he goes, uh, no disrespect, Sonny, but I ain't doing it. I thought, yeah, I fucking had that a few times. I'll just put it in my pocket. Yeah. And then half an hour later, I'm commentating on stage and I can hear my phone buzzing. <laughs> it comes off and I goes, oh yeah. He goes, uh, it's, it's Barry. I went, I've still got your invite, mate. Don't worry. I fucking know, yeah. I know you too well. Yeah. I'll just put the phone down. Yeah. It was like, you know, we just know each other so well. Yeah. But, uh, and, and, and to be fair, you know, we are, we're missing, I mean, he wasn't around at the time, but uh, he's a great friend of ours now, Darren Smith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He'd been a great friend of Barry's, and I've got to say, and Barry admits it, I think without Darren there that day. No, he, put, he told me exactly what to do when I was on stage, because I was suffering with cramps, because I'd broke myself right down. And he was making me tense my legs, he was yeah. shouting to me to keep my stomach yeah. tight. He was telling me to keep my head up, he was telling me when I was standing at the back. He shouted as he does, you're still getting fucking judged, get your head up, lad. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it, you, uh, yeah. you, you, you yeah. know what I mean? So some of that, some of that credit... Yeah, yeah friend, half that title was his, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get it. Of course it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. What happened don't, don't forget about me, like, you know. What, no. <laughs> what, what, what happened, Barry? You mentioned downstairs a bit off her, like what happened after that Northwest defeat? What happened in your head there? The Northwest defeat, um, it was the first time I'd gone into the over 50s, I'd always stayed in class two. And I'll be honest with you, I thought I was going to win my qualifier and didn't know I would get on in the Britain. Thought I expected to win my qualifier. And I'd been away from the sport for a bit. I'd looked at myself in a minute and thought I was right. When I got onto the stage lights, I wasn't right. I was out. Okay, I got beat by a smaller man, but he was in building condition. Oh God, he was He was shredded, and he deserved to beat me. And what it done? I went to Nando's for you, and <laughs> <laughs> I done, done damage to a couple of chickens. You went to Nando's, and I was sitting. Darren was going, "Look, lad, just get in it, Kieran." Look, lad, just get in it, just do it. You'll get yourself right. You get yourself. I said, can't be asked. I'm not doing it no more. My daughter was getting on me. Dad, just do it, just do it. So by the time I finished my Nando's, my head was clear. Was it? Yeah. I just, I was starving. Just everything. Mm. The, the prep was hard. It didn't seem everything didn't seem to go right. Um. So I phoned Mike then. I said, right, I'm gonna have a go with this. Everyone's telling me to have a go. I'm gonna have a go. I went back to the gym. Back to the door and board. My missus wouldn't let anything touch my mouth unless it was on that piece of paper. It was on me on me fridge. Yeah. I looked at it she like, nothing. She she was really good. And she said to me, Don't come home without that bread. Yeah. Said, Don't come home without that bread. Like how, how important it is for the support of your family, isn't it? Yeah. My, 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 yeah. My, my daughter and my wife support me when I compete brilliantly. Brilliant. My mates, the likes of um, Kieran and Dan, 100%, 110% there with me. They'll train with me, they'll come to every show. If I'm in a show, the other end of the country, they'll be there. That's it. Shouting, do this, watch it, do this, do that. And they're not the likes of them people. I, 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 I wouldn't do it. And back in the day, when I'm competing against the likes of these, I wouldn't have enjoyed doing it. You wouldn't have been as good as you were. Look, it makes you better because. I'd hear because there's no social media with there. Oh, I feel just one of the early show. Right, he must be looking good. <laughs> no bridge, he's no, going to no, be, no, no, right. be looking good anyway. Let's, let's get it right, right. Barry is the most nervous competitor going because I used to go and judge all the shows. As soon as <laughs> the next day, uh, right, he was in class two. Uh, what was he looking like? Will I beat him? Will I beat? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, he, he, he talks it like a big man, but every shot, he was in it. What does it look like? Uh, honestly, you know, you know what you like, Barry. I, you know, I remember doing what? before I won the overall Northwest in uh, 2006. I done the pendle. I was watching it. 
Joe Spider. Now, the yes, there was a bunch of <laughs> And then, in the changing, in the changing names, you could see through the, the door from the changing names. See you, Mr. Bridge, stands the girl goes to the lads. Shut that fucking door, shut that door. He's down trying to look through. He was heard at the end of the bread. Yeah. Oh, he shut the door. You could see me on stage anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You could see me on stage anyway, so I'm saying, shut the door, shut the door. <laughs> and then she was down the walk house and there they are. <laughs> there they are. Oh, man, I were dressed in a frock with a blonde wig and he said, I'm going to get another suit on. It was things like that. You'd, you'd go to shows <laughs> to support the lads, but yeah. also, I don't know what you're looking like. Yeah. I want to know if you're banged on or if you've depleted too much or if you've overcut or what have you. Yeah. So I, I can get an idea of what yeah. I, I'm up against. Yeah. But don't forget you've got these two and then you've got Foxy. Luke, Nick, Luke Nichols, who's a genetic yeah. freak. Yeah. Yeah. Big car, yeah. Big car, yeah. big yeah. 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 A genetic freak. Then you had Dave Fox. You had Dave Fox, he was just like a, a gorilla. Yeah. He was yeah. huge. Yeah. Uh, Dave Bell, when Dave Bell was, Dave was on, he yeah. was good. Yeah. Um, Ian Wells, so Ian Wells, oh, no, 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 yeah. Ian. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many shows Ian should have won. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, and he yeah. never. But when you knew he was in your class, you knew if you weren't tight, you weren't doing well. Yeah. And if Ian was there, so there wasn't just us. There was, I reckon, it, in fact, ten. Yeah, but ten. It could have went. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, if you were if, if you were a fraction off, you weren't getting Gary Wilson, Scotland, Gary Wilson, Gary Wilson, Gary Wilson, yeah, Gary Wilson, 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 Gary Paul, Paul Megwood. Megwood. Paul Megwood. Yeah. yeah, with Paul. No, it was 2004 when Megwood won it. 2005 when me and Foxy had his annual battle. Foxy won it, I was second. Uh, 2004, Luke won it. No, 2003, Luke won it, but I was joint first yeah. with him and he had one more first place vote than me. Megwood was. was no, Megwood was five. Megwood was four, because that was the year I didn't compete and I was watching it. I got ill about three weeks before and had to pull out. Right. I was there supporting right. you that time. Yeah, five, out, didn't it? <laughs> Five was Dave Fox beat me, I was second. Ah, that's right. And then six. Yeah, seven, four. Seven, yeah. Eight. And that, that was trouble, you see. I mean, you, there, were, there were a few times when that top few, like when Barry was third in uh, his class two in Britain, some people had him first, some right. people had him second, no. third. The top three was that close. awesome. And that and close. And, so sometimes you suffer defeat and it was a very close decision. And this is the thing with bodybuilding, you can either go away and, and cry about it, or you can go away and think, right, I need to get better, it can motivate you. And there's many times that when you, when you won, it was a close win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you lost, it was a close loss. And it was just fight margins all the time, weren't yeah. it? Because we were that good. And no one used to turn up and give you an easy ride. Tim's mentioned, no disrespect to today's the athletes, but back then in that two thousands, I mean, talk about evolution. But going backwards in my book, that them top six, top ten of these class two Britons, everyone were nailed. Oh, Gary Keith was six, and then he won uh, oh, well, Worlds a week yeah. later. Yeah. You know, there were guys that had come six in Britain and went Europe a week later because yeah. all the top yeah. six. Were, so it was a fine margin. It was a very yeah. fine margin. Too. Yeah. yeah. Top ten guys at that time. Yeah. yeah. We could have all beaten each other. Yeah. The strength in depth were ridiculous. The thing is, if you, if you got beat, even if you played third, fourth, you all had up high. You got beat by the best. Yeah. yeah. You're not. You're not in. A mediocre class, well, you're in a class of champions. Yeah. In, did it yeah. one year, you got, I don't know where you placed in the Britain, Thanks. but then you went to Aberdeen to the world. Yeah, I was done well in the world. And, yeah. and you changed the result round. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. 2003, John, John yeah. and Mike Donnelly beat me in the yeah. Britain. Yeah. And then we went to the Wales and Aberdeen. Yeah. And I think I've had placed higher than you. did not, you were top six, were you? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And that was in the matter of weeks. 
Yeah, that's how quick you can change it. Yeah, yeah. You can lose condition in half yeah. an hour, 20 minutes. And, and it's also, yeah. it, it, it. it's not even yeah. about yeah. losing condition, you've got a different set of judges. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a well, judging panel, that's and they might prefer well, he, the package he's got, or yeah. he's got, or I've got, or vice versa. That's the way it is. Yeah, that's true. It's, it, you know, you can be a touch better, but that judge doesn't favour you on a particular time. I mean, the strength of class two at that particular time. Oh. I mean, oh, I was lucky enough to win, come through against these yeah. guys. But when we got to the overall, I'd have said, any of the top six of the Britain that year that I actually won the overall, yeah. if John had won it, or Barry had yeah, won yeah. it, or Dave Fox had won it, or Andy Fox would have won that overall. The, the real battle oh. for the Britain that yeah, year was yeah, in class two. two. Class two was so much superior to the other guy. Yeah. <coughs> what you were famous for? Oh, that it's somewhat silly, don't <laughs> There's a lot of things you were famous for. Um, and something you never came through at, you know. Um, but that year you got it absolutely, it was fantastic. But you, you quite often you had to pull out of shows because you were trying too hard. Yeah. Some silly things. And yeah, well, okay, guys, it's still part two, and we're going to go back into um, just going um, about the like, past and now um, in the bodybuilding stage. Really, um, literally, I've uh, just come back into sport for the last year, and I've noticed a massive difference because when you guys were on stage, you were always big and you were always rock hard, and it was very, very rare there was someone out of Nick really. Yeah? So um, how, long, how long were you out of the sport for? About 10 years now. So what are the main differences that you see from then to now? Okay. Because you will see massive I see, I see big differences. Like, um, first things first, the amount of competitors in the Mr. Classes has gone down quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, secondly, you probably get like two, three people out of the whole show, Nick. Yeah. All right. And what you're calling proper Nick. Uh, proper, proper Nick, as in like really rock hard yeah. Nick. Um, yeah, the, the quality's probably dropped a little bit. Social media's made a big impact. Social media, okay. And I know we're all talking about people telling uh, all these so, like social media like um, advisors and such, telling all this stuff. That's different. a very nice way of putting it. I'm, you know, I'm trying to be polite. Yeah. You know? Nobeds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a real way of putting it. That's the real way. Yeah. yeah. But like, I mean, I've noticed because obviously I, I, I work at a gym and stuff and and um, all these young kids are like on talking about like we're talking for refeed days and like all the shit days they can have and all this food and stuff and they're on all sorts of crap while they're like two weeks out from the show and I think to myself well when I was doing it Graham Porter had me on potatoes, chicken and broccoli for six weeks so like, that's all you have and I, and oh, I couldn't, and I couldn't do yeah, anything sure. else like yeah. you know and like they're having like Dairy still, and they're having, yeah. or they're trying to make food nice for them, but and they use the word yeah. refeed as a substitute for cheap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. refeed. Refeed. It, it sounds yeah. like you're doing something good. Yeah, yeah. I'm on a refeed day. Like you just have some Yeah, you just yeah. sort of make. Yeah, and I think that maybe even the discipline's not as good as it was. Maybe yeah. I don't know if that's true or not. But like uh, the youth today, like there's a young lad at our gym, and he was getting ready for the show Saturday, right, and. He used to go, oh, I've had a refeed day, without even telling me, you know, and you just, and he goes, I've had a whole carrot cake. I'm like, <laughs> fucking hell, you're like a week out from the show, dude. <laughs> a week out from yeah. the show, yeah. you know, and that's why it was, it was pretty smooth, wasn't it, to be fair. And, well, uh, yeah, what a surprise. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> King Carl. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> had a great tan, though. Yeah, but no, yeah, that's the difference, because I think discipline, isn't it? Discipline is massive. Because um, if I did something wrong, I would have got levy from Graham. Do you think you know? it's discipline, or do you think it's the fact that you're telling them real advice, probably didn't even fucking charge them? Yeah, didn't. Yeah. And then they're going and listening to X, Y, Z, B, A, C. Well, the bouncing between everyone. Yeah. Aren't they? Exactly. yeah. Oh, what you've got this. to remember is John's chip trained numerous yes. competitors, champions, free of charge. Yeah. I have myself. Yeah. Paul undoubtedly yeah. has. Yeah, I've got. A you right. have. You've helped people. Yeah. Now all these people, it, it's a business, it's a money-making thing. Yeah. The likes of us, as you say, we call dinosaurs, yeah. who have got knowledge how to get into condition. We do it for free, for the mm -hmm. love of the sport. You probably forgot more than yeah. most people have These people, know. people do it as a business, There's as a means. There's one guy who's slagging me up and getting rid of a few people ready. He says, oh, Paul's old school, I'm new school. And he was like, travelling, and I sent it back the message back to him. 
But you've won fuck all, mate. Yeah. You've no leg, you've no back, you come nowhere every time. It's Mr. Britain, but he's on the school. But I'm also yeah. Yeah. Mr. Britain. <laughs> the guy actually competed against me, mm. telling everybody who's going to beat me. There was three good guys in the line This was a, a universe over in yeah. He come fourth. <laughs> Thinks he'd been ripped off. It's yeah. crazy. I went been scammed and then he's telling everybody how to get them. And all he's got is about ten trying and harder medals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think everyone has to remember, like, um, because a lot of the youth today probably don't know who you guys are, really, because they're probably no. too young. Yeah. Yeah. But remember, if you were to this now, any one of these guys here would have walked the Britain these days, wouldn't they? You know, and that's, that's the truth, isn't it? It's, that's like, the it's, truth. it's like... Back uh, in the day, probably, what, yeah. What, 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 what's the invented the wheel? <laughs> what's the invented the wheel? The wheel's never changed. Yeah. So, when you say old school, it's like they're trying to make it geography, but mm. the truth is, once you know what the formula is and the keys to the door, yeah. that key never changes. Yeah, exactly. Right. People no, are trying yeah. to... Well, there's no new foods been invented. So. <laughs> <laughs> Chick- there's not new chicken and old chicken, <laughs> new eggs, <laughs> old eggs, new pop tarts, the yeah. old, old new, squats, yeah, new, new squats. Yeah. Yeah. Coca Cola pop tarts, yeah. New, yeah. new Coca Cola pops. Harry Balls. Harry Balls are the new ones. Harry Balls, yeah. 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 I'm full of Harry Balls. Okay, now yeah, I've got to open a sweet shop downstairs. You know what I mean? I could add to that because, like, um, I had a a lad and he he went to someone else a week before a show, right? And they're like, why have you gone there? Um, And he he said, oh, your methods are 15 years old, like. And not, they're, 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 they're not new. I'm like, well, fucking hell, I don't think Joey Nate's thought that, did he? Well, like, you know, you yeah. know, when he was on stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, of the, one of the most rip Mr. Olympias there ever was. I'd be his one. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. 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 And Gus Daly worked too fat, weren't he? You know, I mean, uh, look at the, the, the Olympias since. It's bollocks, isn't it? It's yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> People out there, you just want to. Get a reality well, you, you check. Know, you've got to put it into perspective. You look okay. You go back. Red Park. Arnold yeah, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Lee Haney. Donnie and Yates. They've all ate proper food. Yeah. And they've all become champions. They're all fish tasty steak. We, yeah. we, we've, we've all we've all left Broccoli. proper food. Yeah. That's all they all did. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I can tell you, been in, in my position, uh, in Nabba is, I get an awful lot of people coming to me. Uh, Basically, really horrendous stories were the paying uh, an internet coach and coming to me going, you're telling me to do this, it can't be right. And just one example was this fellow was making a cook a chicken and pour the fat into the, uh, into a... I think I've heard this one. Of course, it's yeah, serious. Yeah. And make a drink of fat. I'm going, what? You put, <laughs> put, but this is common, every year I get two, three, four people calling me up saying, I think there's something wrong, can I ask your advice? And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just I know you're laughing, but it's like, that's a broth. <laughs> that's a broth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting shredded on a broth. <laughs> Baxter's broth. Baxter's broth. <laughs> Some of the things that people are telling me, I'm just like, what? I had a one guy eating cheese on his, on his last week of preparation. <laughs> Been told to go on this cheese diet. Cheese diet? Cheese really? diet. I thought that's a fucking yeah. one watching. Who was it? Wallace or Grant? Going back to like in your in your era, right, you guys, like what what are the what are some of the what's like Barry start with you, what, what's your like best memory? Between the three of you or the two of you? My, my and William are all silly stuff. I was talking to you. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two great stories to tell Oh, okay. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> well, do you want to go first? And then Barry goes Go on, then. I'll into them. Go on, then. Yeah. <laughs> I've known this guy, you know, a long time. And yeah. him, it's, we've always had a good laugh, you know, from the stuff I've just done. The fun, there's been two funny ones. The funniest one was, do you remember in 2011? Oh, I remember. Brazil. Brazil? In Brazil? Yeah. After in Italian? Italian. No, 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 if you don't open, I'm going to smash it down with fire extinguisher. <laughs> and it was like, I'm telling you, 
Let's I mean, he's going to your room. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so next, was trying, I was next door to you. Yeah, he's trying to get in through the key. And you know, I'm threatening the door with it. He's talking to the door, <laughs> threatening it. And he's, I've had enough of this fucking man. And this girl says, Is your mate crazy? I said, It's been mentioned before, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the throwback, you remember the old John Cleese thing with the faulty towers of the car? Red was car breaks down. The car breaks down, down. he's braided it with the branch. Yeah, you yeah. will start, right? I'm talking to you. Yeah. It was, it was a strange scenario. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then another time, I've been out drinking one Saturday night. He was getting ready for the NACU University with Eugene, weren't you? A text coming at seven in the morning. Not doing universe. Mandy dead stand on my table last night. I've told me better thought there must be some good stuff going on. Preston must be under that. <laughs> that was Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. Sunday morning. What, I rang him up. What, what, what was that? What was that? What? He said that he, in English. He said, oh no. Right. He said, I am not doing the universe because yeah. a man did a headstand on my table. Oh, yeah. Go on. Right. Carry on. I know this. Yeah. yeah. Some good stuff in press, yeah. must be honest, they're after yeah. that. <laughs> anyway, he says, uh, I've told a guy, said, I'm going to, I rung him up actually, I says, What are you on about? He says, Well, well a bloke did a headstand on me, he says, I'm going to do a headstand on my table. He says, No, you're not. Yeah, I'm not going to do an headstand on me, he'll probably tell you. No, I'll let him tell the story now because he, he, he yeah. Well, yeah, well, it was two weeks out from one of universities in Germany, and uh, <laughs> I'd just done a few shows, I'd done all right, I was in shape. And uh, I nipped to see one at lads on the door, one at door lads just to pick some money up. And uh, girlfriend were with me. I said, hey, I'll just go downstairs then. I said, I'll have a, get yourself a wine, I'll have me, me drink. And then this great big farmer looking type bloke came and did a bloody perfect headstand on your table. And he did a backflip, landed on the floor, and walked back to his three young beauties that he was with, three, three young lasses. And uh, she went, what was that? Do you know him? I said, no, I don't know him. I said, we're a bloody good headstand, right? <laughs> anyway, he had a sup of his hair, we walked back up. <laughs> up again. But some assault landed. I said, fucking hell, I was sat in an alcove with some other couples that I didn't know. And then, third time he comes back, I said, no, mate. I said, look, you're going to fall on everyone doing that. I said, go on that table over here. I said, it's not a fucking circus. I said, go on, he said, no, this is my headstand table. I said, no, I said, I'm using this table. And he picked drinks up, and I made like that, and said, here, give us me fucking drinks. He said, you have to move your drinks from your headstand. And he's not a kid, he's about 38. I said, put drinks on the table. He said, look, I'm doing an headstand. I said, you're not doing an headstand. I said, it's not a circus. I said, do one on here. He said, you're going to fall on us. Fucking here, get fucking drinks. I said, here, go on here. Anyway, he walked over it and had a nice watch on and a game chain. And he went to there, we were like summer out at WW, but if you going, I thought it reminds me of my dad when he used to spare with my dad when I was young, you know. I says, here, put these in the bag. She said, why? I said, I'm going to have to put him to sleep, you know. <laughs> so he walked up, he said, I'm doing an headstand. I said, you're not doing an headstand around this day, I'm doing a fucking headstand. I said, there's not doing an headstand anyway. I give him a fucking clap, <laughs> put him there, and I thought, we watch it UFC back. I thought, fucking hell. I'm a bit, uh, what was his name? Uh, light heavyweight, heavyweight champion. I can't remember his name now. I thought, here, yeah, I'm going to do a bit of this. So, there, he was doing a Burbeck <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 some funny dance like that. Like, yeah. And he had long, long grease here and a big beard like So, I pulled him around. I thought, right, I just put a choke on him. Put the back right, and it would all answer everything. And then tremble all kicked in. <laughs> it went from a, a real naked choke to a I'm going to snap his fucking neck. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, that fucking tremble on it's a lot to answer. For. <laughs> <laughs> many, many a person in prison because of that chemical, I'll tell you. <laughs> and uh, I crunched, ended up bloody like that, so I dropped him off floor, then I did fucking Michael Flatley on him, the <laughs> river dance, like that, and uh, ended up like fucking bollocks happened, you know what I mean, and uh, that would happen, then I text him like, because straight away, you know, when you get a, you have one, yeah. just, you know, that real deep crunch, you know. Anyway, so I thought that's me fucked like anyway, but it ended up going. I thought I'm not letting that fucking basically we're a fucking big time court dealer, oh, hence cool. the three young birds and he thought he was the hardest man in town. But um, 
I ended up going and I had them, them pads you put on, keep it where you stick them to your skin. Yeah. They're like it. No, not talent. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> <laughs> <He's> half <laughs> boy. <laughs> yeah. At ice, and I, I went and did, did show. I work, work, work great. Like, but I don't have many painkillers. I had to invent a, a side chest. Have you ever done a side chest on your own side? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. it's yeah. crap. Right, well, yeah, I just yeah. don't feel yeah. like, you know, yeah. my, my most muscular were like a. It's too hard. I don't know it, more like a men's <laughs> fitness one. It's more like. <laughs> <laughs> More like that, you know. You know I couldn't squeeze, you know. Yeah, but you know, at least I got the well, right. I, I just got to interrupt a little bit here because it seems to be a bit of a common trait there. Because I remember one year when we were going to I don't know if it's Greece. We're going somewhere. And you got into a lot of trouble the night before, I had to go on the road. Oh, Slovakia, yeah. Oh, Slovakia. Yeah. <laughs> Tremble all again. And, Tremble. and you had to go on the road. Yeah, so what well. happened the night before that one then? Well, I nipped round with some flowers and a, and a card for one of my ex-girlfriends. About 11, I had my slippers on, my furry slippers. And uh, I was flying 7 o'clock, meeting him at Manchester the next morning to go to... Uh, Slovakia. 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 Yeah, brilliant. 2009 World, sorry. Best shape of my life. Yeah. Anyway, she'd been going a bit and I uh, thought I'd better take the car around. So I text knocks out the door like, she comes to the door and I notice this, uh, this ugly ginger kid sat in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, fucking hell. One thing's bad when your missus is cheating, or when he's fucking ginger. <laughs> there's, there's fucking anger and there's fucking rage, you know. <laughs> so I went in and I told him politely to leave. And he just carried on into his tuna and fucking jacket potato like, you know. So uh, I remember when I was. You must have felt guilty after when you knew he was deaf, you didn't know he was deaf after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I asked him, I asked him to leave politely. But it was funny, because after, after I'd mauled him, um, he was curled up on the floor like, you know, like a Brussels sprout. And I'll never forget, because it was weird, and then I said, go on, you can get up and leave. Uh, not in those terms, like. But I remember, when he got up, I've always been sneaky in his body, you know. I thought, when I get up, I'll just... I'll pop one in the forehead, you know. Anyway, I threw an eye kick, and uh, it was funny, because he ducked, and my slipper flew off my foot, landed up dead all rail, and it bounced. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm more impressed, and get you know, how the fuck's that gone up there? <laughs> he ran out at the doorway. I then got home, my case and my passport and everything, and I got all my food, everything prepped. I thought, shit, I can't fucking, because, you know, things got a bit messy, like, so. I went to my training partner, Carl, that's me, like, and he stayed there, and he had to keep going to my flat, but police were there, you see. So I'm like, shit. Anyway, eventually, five in the morning, he goes round, he worked there, he had my key, he fetched stuff to his house, and he sat here and just started smoking again. So get us 20 fags. I'm like that. <laughs> goes to Liverpool Airport, met team, I tell him, I said, Mick, I've got a problem because I've got answer phone things on yeah, yes. Oh, fucking, fucking shit. I said, Mick's going, look, calm down, Johnny. He said, it'll be all right. He said, this Saturday, he said, the world's next Saturday, Walton. Fucking <laughs> 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 Walton. Fucking hell, that was what you said at airport. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I met you a couple of days when I got back with Morrison's at Cafe oh, 2009. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. police rang me and he had to make a for an interview. <laughs> and, they, they were blonde, but when she were nice and like, and, and she interviewed me, and when I told her about Slipper, because I said, as if I'm going to go around and try to be violent and cause trouble in my furry slippers, I said, you don't do that, you know what I mean? I said, I went round as a peacemaker, and uh, I said, it, 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 it got, you know, he tapped me like, I says, at the end of the day, I says, you know, I don't go around fighting people, but especially not in my slippers. And I said, when my slipper came off, I landed up. She had to stop interviewing you laughing at me. <laughs> I said, uh, I said, I'll just know for all that I could balance a slipper on a day door in the living room. <laughs> you know. Never to be done again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what about you, Barry? What stories do you remember about? I've got a lot. I've got, I can't match that. I oh, can't you match can't. battling mm. people in slippers. Oh, no, no, you can't match that. No, no. no. Well, like, when you were competing against these two, like some of the things that went on backstage or... You do the comparisons. Because I don't know what his fucking number is. I don't know what his number is. 
I don't know what Luke Nichols number is. I don't know what my number is. So he gets called, and he gets called, and I don't get called. Oh, I'm fucked yeah. because I'm not in the top six. So whoever got called, yeah. you needed to make sure. And once you need your number, with everyone else's, that's it. We're there. That's the yeah, man. That's the biggest thing. Give you big. Because if you left at the back, you know, you still the first call. Yeah, you know, you got it. Yeah, yeah it's did, cool. did you always get pulled out of that first one? I was called out first. Of course. <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'm supposed to go in yeah. the middle. Yeah. I don't know why you made the move, the guy who was, was calling me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you there's been times know. where I, I haven't made the first call out. There's been, I think there's one time where it didn't make, but it's still got in the top. Might have been the year I was in there because I used to do the call outs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's one year, my head, my head totally went, my head totally went, and I couldn't stay still. And I was, and Dad was going, keep your head up, lad. Keep your fucking head up, lad. And I'm going, the next minute, that line went back. I can't remember who was, who was in it, and I was actually, then he called me and some of the others who'd just been in there uh, well, well, what's going on here? But then he'd done another call, put us all back and done a call out of different people and then brought me out again with all, the original face so yeah. I've, I've, I've done it here. Yeah. I'll tell you what, what the, what the, the funniest was, um, it was, what was, the show we used to do up um, by Stoke, Kids Grove. Kids Grove. Kids Grove. Oh, Kids yeah. Grove. Phil Simmons yeah, passed away. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I had done that in 2003. Done it two years, but running two years running. But 2003, right, the Misters goes on stage. Paul Sutton's one of the judges. There were so many judges. You do your, your routine and what have you. I, I think that was the year I did a guest spot. Was it, yeah? Yeah. I didn't get a court. I'm standing at the back. I didn't get a call out. I'm thinking, I must look shy. Who was it? I must look shy. I can't remember. <laughs> but I didn't get a call out. So I'm thinking, look at that's gone. And I'm looking at me, you girl at the time there, and I'm going, to say, what? I'll do a look, what will do a look? And she's yeah. just going. <laughs> so the next minute, three judges over. So I'm walking up to the Tesco to get some. A chicken, get some, get some chicken. Paul Sutton come past in the car. He pulls over. He goes, "Look great there, man. Really, really good today." I said, "Paul, didn't get a call out." He said, "You've worried yourself, bastard." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have to call you out. Yeah. I said, oh, "I said, fuck for that." I left at the back because it was shite. Yeah. Oh. Well, that was that was one of the. You do not know. Yeah. 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 If you don't hear, you know what you think. Yeah, you think oh, you Yeah. Head drops and you think that's it, didn't you? Well when I when I did UK, uh, two thousand and five Paul came with me like you were in You're absolutely Oh back then. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand and five would have been at St. George as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um Dave Bell were my main competitor. Yeah, for you to play on it. That day. And then there was uh, obviously four, three, two, one. Anyway, it took me into, to, you know, into men's bike seats and whatnot. He said, basically, when you get into, you know, our flame and whatnot, there's only one thing to look, just check back and legs. <laughs> you don't need to see all good parts. So he just said, drop trolleys. I dropped trolleys. He said, yeah, that's one. And, um, you know, just enjoy it. So, same again, even though you've, one shows and you've you've been up there like you always needed that reassurance from an honest yeah. champion who knows his stuff you know what i mean and uh, i used to do it every year at northwest at floor Hall, with bernie uh, in chambers and uh does does have a look at me sometimes you know and some other liverpool lads um, and just gives you that reassurance but the funny thing at uk was for overall paul had Look, he said, that's one overall easy. He said, it's no contest. He says, just walk on stage, wave, 
and walk off. He'll, he'll <laughs> <be drowned. laughs> he said, don't bother with Paul's in routine. He said, just that crack. Now, did you know where that came from? Yeah, he told me. Yeah. yeah. He told me. I was there. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah. wave. That was yeah. my initial, Mr. first Mr. Britain ever walked out. That was in 1983. 83. 83. Have you heard Vince this Brown, Vince Brown walked out and he got fabulous genetics. Oh, like incredible. Like Sergio Oliver type physique. Yeah. Hit one pose. That's right. I just walked up. I walked up with a big grin. So Brian McCallan, who was yeah, was by that time, yeah. went one better. He walked out. Bang! Didn't even bother posing. Smiled and walked off. Right. <laughs> and I, was yeah. like, I was like a yeah. young guy yeah. looking up the top. I was the same. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think I was fifteen. Yeah, yeah. just making a statement. Eighteen and nineteen. Yeah, yeah. what a yeah. statement. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, in two thousand and six, I said to you the night. Yeah. I'm going to walk out there against Brown. Said, don't do that, it's fucking told you, can't stop this now. I might not appreciate that these days. Well, that, was that the EU one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you a little story. So, I come off the judging panel and I died for a wee. So, I'm having a wee and he comes running in the toilet after me. And he goes, right. He says, if I haven't won today, he said, me, Barry, John, we're all marching off. <laughs> went, fucking hell, it's my fault. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in 2005, I thought we were going to win it, and in all fairness, they popped to beat me, you know. Well, yeah. You know, sharp, it was close. Well, I was rock yeah. hard, but I think yeah. you were forward. Yeah, you just yeah. lost some size. Yeah, you know, I went, I'll, if I'd have gone on as I was at the Midlands, on the Midlands two weeks before, I might yeah. have done it. Yeah. Yeah. I went so obsessed with condition, I'd flat shredded. Yeah. Oh, God, you were about to take body fat to the top five something. That yeah. was one of the hardest things, yeah. was but, to keep your size, because you knew you were up against it. Yeah. So you had to make sure you were shredded, shredded. Yeah. Sometimes, just go that bit too far. Yeah. Use your belly, belly your fullness. Yeah. Because you go, you, you can't be off with the likes of these. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? So you I have to be actually, bang on. I'll tell you a very funny story. Yeah. 2006. I really was obsessed with it, Mr. Britain. This was like, it was. I got to a stage where I was. They always used to play simply the best music when they had the overall out, you know. And I was in the house. I got. I really had lost the plot. I remember this. Well, I'd lost, yeah. lost it a long time ago. But, the obsession with the Britain really set me over the edge. I used to be stood on little stools shaking hands with a fictitious second and third guy. With a simply bet the best player. Every time that record come on, I know we're all dreaming like Billy Lyre of the old 1970s. Yeah. Dreaming about winning the Brit Mr. Britain. I didn't care about anything else. And in, in 2003, I came safe, second to Luke Nichols, who tied for first place, and he got one more first place for home. I jumped over to the IFBB and come second to Paul George, who was oh, in Minsk at that time. Yeah, he got his broke out the day, year after. Yeah. Then I did the pro am and come second to Boris Klein. Then I did the, uh, the 2005 grip come second to Dave Fox again. And every time I used to look to the sky, please God, when I got made the final six, please God, let me win this one. Just once, just please. And in second place, Paul Lumpy. Fucking hell. 2006, I oh, thought, uh, Paul Lumpy's dear. Let me win this and you can have me sell. <laughs> <laughs> Long bill, class two and over all this. <laughs> and I'd have me fucking check, I split with girlfriends, a lot of shit that everybody knows about. Yeah. Yeah. The whole life fucking is up. <laughs> Went down the potty for about five years. Yeah. But in all yeah. fairness, yeah. I've, got the, I've, I've got the devil's pentecost tattooed on my back with the reaper. A deal's a deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm damned and I know more people that'll meet these guys down there, so I'm quite as good anyway. Yeah. Yeah. you're standing there though, mate, when you like, and in third place, second place, oh, it's one of you. Well, I won the Britain like, last year. When he said second place. No, no, but go back further. I'm not with it. I'm looking alone to see who's got first. Where is it? Yeah, you the fuck's yeah. got first because I haven't placed here. But remember, <laughs> you came to me and I said it's between you and this other guy. Quite yeah, clearly. yeah, yeah. And then what happened then? He got, fo he, he he got, got fourth. fourth. Yeah, but then because he got fourth, right, I think it's between you two. He got called out fourth. And then I thought, well, if it's close between us, I'm going to get a third. Didn't name your name. Second, didn't name your name. So I'm thinking, and the funniest thing is, uh, I was like, um, Dini poses like there, the top six, the top three, and all that. That's it, big daddy. So, so, well done, B. 
Oh, die Joch was fucking 20 years. Ja, dat is wel goed. 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 Ja. I was watching the podcast from the Philippines, yeah. so I thought, thank yeah, God he's fucking fine. You got one out last week. I suppose we've got a little chat about um, some of these things you mentioned earlier, Paul, about uh, the Philippines and stuff, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm not working for the Philippine Tourist Board, you know, but there's a lot of people might think. But, uh, how can we put it? From a, a young, anybody's welcome to visit me over there and come training. <laughs> if you've got a married man, if you're a married man or in a long relationship or happy, please don't go. <laughs> I've seen, I won't mention any names, but it's well documented about one very good bodybuilder that unfortunately things went a little way with for him. It's just happened to a former world's strongest man who's a legend. He's fell in love with the place. Um, for any guy going over there, let's say guys in the 30s, 40s, 50s as divorce and girls aren't exactly kicking your door down back in England and they land over there and all of a sudden they're getting attention and everybody, you know, you sexy handsome man, I never got that in Castleford in Pontefract, you know, <laughs> can't be where I live in the UK. And you, you go over there and the first few days you're getting all this attention and you know, it blows your head a little bit. Like I said earlier, you start wondering why do all these things aren't pretty? Maybe the slant eyes they have, given them above six and six vision, and they can appreciate the beauty that the girls here can't quite see. Because nobody's called me sexy auntie mom since I got back here. <laughs> <laughs> or right, possibly the flying over two time zones, the pressure gives you a chiseled jawline when you land in Asia, and you're suddenly beautiful and you're sort of George Clooney thinking. <laughs> then you fly back to England, you go damn ugly again, and nobody's interested in you. you know? <laughs> It's not a place for a, a man in a relationship to go. If you're single and got, you know, a little bit of a calmness to you, you might be able to handle it. But for a lot of guys that don't, <laughs> Mike's been telling stories. He's he's giving this same speech to people where guys are going over there and coming back, selling the house, selling the businesses, leaving the missus, and all of a sudden they're on a mass crusade. Of a <laughs> mass crusade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a warning for you, isn't it? It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a great country, I mean, Philippine bodybuilding is really taking off. Yeah. Some absolutely. fantastic physiques, you know, uh, you'd think maybe not, but there's the one guy who's won two NAC Universal Art Classic, wow. and I'm pretty confident he would probably do very, very well in that if he come over. Wow. I'd, I'd actually stick my neck out and say I could pick a team from the Philippines. Fashion Bats would have a universe, and every one of them would place in the top six. Oh, That's a bold statement. I can't afford to pay for the place. Well, we'll, 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 we'll get if we could find a. Oh, sponsor. A sponsor. To do, um, we had a girl called Shell Nakanishi, if you watch your channel. She won the overall NAC universe two years ago. Right. You know, There's a guy called John Sifra, a personal friend of mine. He's very much similar mold to Dorian in the sort of 80s. And He's got that physique. Just mass missing a last little bit of Christmas to make it all the way. Right. There's some world-class physiques there. Wow. Wow. And you sit in the Philippine bodybuilding, you've got three, four shows every weekend scattered about all over these. Oh, wow. Massive lineups. It's really taking off. That's cool. You know, it's good. I'm lucky to be involved in the judging side of things and coaching a few of these guys. It's yeah, Barry's just thinking you can fucking stay in Philippines till we've finished. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. Keep them there. So, are we going to see you back a uh, piece in Nabra next year? Well, now you've made it the over 55 year universe, which is, I think, like I've mentioned before with the IBFA, I'm not trying to creep around Martin, but we've got a good five oh, year. Yeah. Five, well, five, I think the five year increments. Works. I think it's too many classes to be honest. Well, they've still got, I mean, at the University of Europe last year, there's still eight, seven, ten in each class. Yeah. 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 And this was in the five year increments. So, yeah, there's a, back to your question. I was supposed to do the NAC Universe, and I was possibly going to do the IBFA Worlds this year. Mm -hmm. But I've got a hip problem at the moment. I'm on Premier, so I'm going to have to call it on shots. I think we're looking long term at hip replacement. So, what I'll probably try and do is three cortisone checks to get me over next year. Yeah. My plan is Nabi Universe over 55s. RBFA Worlds, and I may finish off with the NAC, I don't know, because it's that's over 50, and the standard there is getting higher and higher, and I'm getting older. But, but the over 55 is probably perfect class for me. Yeah. I won the RBFA over 55. You know, that so was in Last year I won that one. Yeah, I Did think you do that. the job? I was going to make an issue. I was going to issue a challenge to these two. For the joke on the podcast, I've got the bottle for the holding up. I was going to issue an old challenge, let's go back to the old. 
Back to the Future. Yeah. He's three. What's three doing the Navi Yuris? Getting over 54. <laughs> yeah, we're, only 50, we're, only, we're only checking this to you, mate. Yeah, no, I'm only checking this to you, mate. It would be a nice thought, though. Yeah, it would be nice to see you back next year, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully. I know Barry's going to come back next year, aren't you? Well, I wanted to do it this year, but with this problem with me, like it's going to be next year now. It's going to be harder for me because I'm going to be running over. Fit. It's going to be a 45 to 55. So I'm yeah, you put it to the number higher, I can just make it to 53 and a half or something until we have got bricks. I'm really all right. right? I'm 53 this year. 53 this year. Yeah. What are you doing? 53. Same. Yeah. 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 Well, in two years' time, I'll have to redo this podcast with these three That's just it. after the end. I'll be really good at over 60s now, we don't It would be nice if we could all, no matter who wins or nothing about that, if we could all compete again one more time. Against each other. Against yeah. each other. That'd be awesome, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Not, not for who's, who wins or anything like that. No, these are big, these are beat me more times than I don't know what, so I'm not bothered about that. If we get beat by them again, so what? Um, it would be just be nice, it would be, be good yeah, fun. Yeah. Well, things can happen. We'll be boring, we'll be that for sure. Yeah, things can happen. Things can happen. You know, it, 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 would, it would be enjoyable. Okay. Yeah. And that just that just shows again, like, all the, the, the camaraderie and the, the friendship. Yeah, yeah we'll make it forever, and that's yeah, what it is. And uh, we respect each other, you see, and yeah. you earn respect, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know when we're going to Northwest, if someone says to me, Bridgie, has got two lads in class one or... Yeah, they're they're good. Good. I know they're going to be good, yeah. so I know my lads have got to be good. Yeah, it's good too. It's good because too. it's friendly rivalry. He wants to win, I want to win. Mm-hmm. But she can't, she can't. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's like Kieran that Barry's getting ready, you know. I, I've known Kieran now yeah. what, nearly 20 years since he was a young kid, tagging along with all these yeah. guys. And I had a right good chat with him because we were giving him some big cheers and stuff, you know, when he said, come and fight us. And, uh, he did great at the UK uh, last year, and um, but what I've always found with Barry's lads is the nice guys, you know what I mean? He doesn't have arseholes in his camp, and they're respectful, and they're decent, they're hard working, and, and that's what he, he preaches into them, and that's why they come up for the ranks, and they end up champions from his gym, you know? It's uh, all right, old school again, the words keep coming out. It's the right school, it's the only yeah, right. It's, it's the only no one yeah. gobs shites in bodybuilding and all these social media. Uh, they love themselves, you're narcissistic, you make us feel sick. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, don't give a, we don't give a shit to the flying fuck about your fucking makeup. You know what I mean? I get up in the morning, we could have a fucking wash, right? But I'm real. Yeah, you know. You know, just like a big bunch of sissies. Yeah, this is old school, the real way. Yeah. <laughs> so the good thing about about old school, like the guys from your gym, Barry's gym, is it costs nothing to be polite. No, it doesn't. Manners cost nothing. That's no. very true. And it's an happened at the Northwest this week. And, and friendships free. And friendships and free. free. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of people. What, do, what is it? Instagram. Do you wonder how many people like likes because they, they, they get sponsored from so many likes. Oh, I don't want to be sponsored. I don't like to someone shake my hand because they're genuinely yeah. friend. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? How are you, mate? Yeah. Do you want a drink? And then, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, that's a good you've thing. been friends for a long time. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's I can say now I look up to these guys and I'll be the first to say it. And, and the other guys we've mentioned today, and I still do. You know, I'm proud to sat in with Jimmy today and you guys are, you know what I mean? More than winning this and doing that, yeah. it's, you know, this is real, yeah. you know what I mean? And we all sing from the same hymn sheet, yeah. you know, and it, that's something you notice, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, our, this day and age. our age group and everything, we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. We're together, we're united even 20 years and going on to war on stage. Mm-hmm. We're well, like that, we're as close as fuck, you know what I mean? This isn't bull, this is real. You can't buy that. You uh, can't make, you know, and he knows that he's part of it. He's the yeah. he's the one that brought us all together yeah. by putting that great show on every year. Well, I, I remember, you know, I remember before, what are you going to say? Go on. I'm just all about Johnny. He was Go very, on. very popular in bodybuilding, obviously. Yeah. When I used to compete, my supporters would come in a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> when John would compete, there'd be 15 national buses coming down yeah. the best style, uh, express train. Yeah. On, the, on, the, on, the, on the front of Southport, you could buy John Bridge two, 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 
men section, John Bridge T-shirt, John Bridge Kirk Knapsack. You know. You yeah. said an ambulance following you. Yeah. 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 He walked on to that, we had what we call the Zambezi Holland. Yeah. All his fans are some bloody ugly lads in this year. Yeah. Made <laughs> a joke about hippos. And when he walked out on stage doing that walk, we'll mention that in a minute. Yeah. That's a yeah. silly walk. It's a patient walk of the Druids, we call it. The Druids, yeah. yeah. And he'd walk out and the place would explode. And I might get a few, go on, Paul, keep. <laughs> but like, like the Cup of Liverpool supported him, you know. <laughs> but the way the way thing was, doing the Paul's new scene. You're like a way game when you play the game. He's done the through the Paul's new scene. There's been everyone cheering and shouting, and he's come on with his walk and all that. And then they say, and next, Barry Vaughan, number 43, Barry Vaughan, when you go. Back to 2011, and I met a come back in the Navigation on five years out of the sport. I actually emailed John. I says, Am I allowed to do the ancient walk of the Druids? Because I don't want to do any co contravene any copy copyright things, because I know it's your walk. And I want it signing so I don't get taken to court. He says, Yes, yeah. you're okay to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I start doing it in the Philippines, and they all think it's me, they don't think it's me. They all think the dog is a reason to walk. Worldwide now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I did yeah. it last year in the NAC World, so the crowd loved it. You know? Oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know it's actually his original, yeah. not mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's super. Oh, good. What we said at the time, in 2006, John finished fourth, and what controversy about that, I thought, you know, especially. At night time, it come out would be completely different from what he did in the afternoon. I think yeah, in the I afternoon, that. I think in the afternoon, I probably deserved it. I've smoothed out a little bit by the night show. John got a lot harder. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. he judged at night, yeah. If, yeah. if, if it had been judged at night, he might well have won it. Well. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, so all the crowd are cheering, and when he comes out doing the walk, <laughs> and then in 2007, we said. I come out and did a more extended walk, and that was it. We said it, it's not him messing about. He doesn't realise he's been put in spiritually by the Celtic forefathers. It's an ancient walk that they used to do around, do around Stonehenge. Yeah. And this is to drive the evil thoughts out of the judge. And then long we all do Stonehenge stone. Yeah, the Stonehenge stone pit stone. Pit stone. <laughs> if you're in the inner circle. And then we've got yeah. the beard festival and the edge stone festival. Yeah, the half beard festival. I did it last year, like, because I was uh, talked to by this man. man. <laughs> And I uh, got me half the hair off my eyebrow and half my beard. And then I thought, shit, it's Cal Jolly's christening on something. <laughs> 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 and yeah, bloody hell. I went there, I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to say something. I noticed he had one eyebrow, half, half, half your beard, half your tash, and off. A friend of mine called Glyn Burton yeah. who started it off. Glyn Burton was the first one, wasn't he? He used to do the Thailand trench. Yeah, he started as well. That was it. Long run. Yeah. But Glyn says, I need some help one day. He fetched a Thai girl back yeah. and he wanted to get rid of her. And he says to me, Paul, I need your help. And he, I had a Jimmy Castle at the time. Had a Jimmy Barry Dunn. should have been calling for that. Well, we could have been calling for that. And he says, I need your help. I want you to do incantational deficits. I said, oh, yeah. what can I know about? He says, we shave half his face. And it's when, on, on the eighth day, we shave the whole face and the soul is cleansed and then back as one. We've got the good and the evil. I said, all right, all right. I went along with it, I've got half a beard. People come in and ask you, are you okay, Paul? I'm fine, mate. He looks with beard, I explained it, you know, but my mate. They're up there and they're just fucking up to get out, you know, I really don't have a twist. Anyway, it was to get rid of this Thai girl that he fetched back. He was confusing and saying, we're doing the half beard festival. And the girl actually said, he got his half beard, I've got mine. I walked in his gym on his dog. And this girl goes, Thailand Buddhist, very religious country, but England have very strange customs. After carrying it on all these years on, you know, yeah. it. it's when Jupiter's moon are lying and we all start to shave the face. <laughs> I've had a few people out of the Philippines, and in Australia, and John and Zach did it this year. Yeah, yeah. So we're all posting yeah. these after yeah. the right. right. Carl did it and all. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that then. <laughs> the Half Beard Festival, yeah. You'll be oh. welcome, we'll invite you next yeah. time. Let's get rid of this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to shave half your hair as well, because I haven't got much. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's all enough in there. Yeah, you'll be cleansed. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to do the Edstone Festival, it's on about, is it the, Matt November the 5th? Yeah, November. Uh, when well, that guy. Yeah. I can't get up there to do it, you know, I'm trying to do it. Filming, we're doing it, we're yeah. Not inside, and I'll some of that stuff. Well, the, uh, 
I think we should we should leave it there. Yeah. But I've, I've, to put a couple of ideas yeah. in, in our in our eyes. But thank you guys for know that. about them getting back on stage together. Yeah, yeah. So we can make something happen. Yeah, uh, we'll, get our, we'll get our heads together and uh, mm, even a little invite, invite Dave, Dave, Dave well, Codd. I've slept this case together, I'm pretty confident I could put the 10 months in and girls, with some very good figure girls there, and they would place in the universe. So talking about you three being on stage. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, but I've just, <laughs> just mentioned that. <laughs> You'll make it an over 53 and a half, Mr. Universe, next year, and we can all go on. I've got an idea <laughs> in my head, I've got an idea in my head already. Yeah, I like it, I like it. Well guys, I wanted to just say to you again, thanks for coming together and sharing all your amazing stories with us all. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. I think a lot of people take a lot of like good humour and stuff from that, but also yeah, some good messages as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed, you know, I've not seen this, you know, Paul a couple of years, not seen him for maybe nine years, you know. Yeah. And, uh, Neither has anybody else. <laughs> it's nice to see Barry down today. I see Barry at the shows a lot of time. I must get up to his gym, like, I know some of my lads go up, and uh, Zane's a good mate of Barry's as well, like, and uh, then obviously I see Mick usually once a month, like, Mick's always coming up. Yeah. But it's good, been a good day, like, and uh, clever bodybuilding, that's what it's about, folks. Yeah. God bless Tim for setting up this venture and asking us here today, mate. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I mean, again, the whole, the whole emphasis of the website is to uh, educate people, the, you know, in the right manner. Yeah, fact, you know, yeah. and it's all free, guys. So, you know. and I'd just like to say, if you've offended anyone, tough shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of Filipinos you'll be watching this when you get to yeah, Let's do it, let's do it. Uh, hi to my beautiful wife Maria, um, Aisha, Natasha, my set daughters. Look after Bear Pig. I won't, that's a funny story. <laughs> 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 I know everybody in the Philippines, hi, I'll be back shortly. No nice worries, yeah. okay guys. Yeah. So guys, big uh, And all my outlaw brothers by the way, I'm sorry I'll get shot Alright, hope you've had lots of uh, fun there guys and we'll see you again soon.